In Yu-Gi-Oh, the cards in your hand are the most important aspect of the game. They are your resources you can use at the right time to help put you in an advantageous state. In 99% of decks, the more cards you have in your hand, the better state you're in. With every standard, though, there is always the outlier, and that is where Infernity comes into play. Infernity is a well-known deck from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime used by Kalen Kessler or Kiyosuke Kiru in the original version and debuted in the physical card game in the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2009 Stardust Accelerator video video game. Yes, that's a mouthful, with some of the archetypes and main support later coming in Stardust Overdrive and the Shining Darkness. The signature of the deck requires most to all of your effects in the archetype to only be activated if you have no cards in your hand. Today, we will go through the history of the hand combos and all of its many other combos that it could do to the opponent, one of which involves looping pretty much all the cards out of the opponent's hand, and let's see how well the archetype is done in its several different eras and iterations. With all that being said, my name is Avery, and this is an Infernity 2010 format, specifically Infernity Deck Retrospective. <laughs> Infernity didn't have the best start upon release, due mainly to a lack of cards. Infernity Archfiend was a great searcher for the archetype, and Infernity Necromancer was great for revival, but those were really the only cards of note the archetype had until the Shining Darkness. This was when the archetype got some of their best support. We had two tuners for the archetype, finally, with both Infernity Avenger and Beetle. That did the job. Infernity Break was a decent removal option for the archetype as well. Then we had the swarming capabilities with Infernity Mirage and Launcher to help the archetype spam synchros. Launcher being such an amazing card that even to this day, at the time of me making this video, Launcher is still at one. A lack of hard ones per turn on these cards helped the archetype turbo out many synchros as possible. Graveyard set up for Launcher and Mirage was boosted with cards like Infernity Inferno, Dark Greffer, and Armageddon Knight, and we had many more ways to summon monsters with Stygian Street Patrol, which came later in Duelist Revolution. The TCG and OCG both had all of these tools around the same same time, but the strategy had some main differences in both regions. Looking at the OCG side of things first, we got the Trishula Infernity strategy. The goal here was to use all of your Infernity cards to summon Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier as much as possible to eat away at the opponent's hand, field, and graveyard. This was helped by how easy it was to summon Infernity Archfiend to continuously search for Launcher. The main reason the TCG never got to play with this version was due to the fact we never got Trishula until Launcher was already put to 1 and Trishula quickly went to one as well on release. This is why the version was OCG exclusive, but we at least had our own version. Heading over to the TCG side of things, in the Shining Darkness, we got a TCG exclusive Infernity card in Infernity Barrier. Now, in 2022, it might be common to see archetypes get a counter trap that negates anything by controlling an archetypal monster, but it was still a pretty novel concept in 2010. Infernities having a card like this in their arsenal gave them an advantage in the TCG that no other strategy had at the time. You could continue your synchro spam to make a big board with Infernity Archfiend and Launcher, but you also search for Infernity barrier once you got all your combo extenders to have some negation. You just had to be sure to keep Infernity Archfiend on the board unless you could make the stronger Infernity Doom Dragon and you wanted to empty your hand as was standard for the archetype. Otherwise, the barrier just wasn't going to be live. It was a strong piece of disruption for Infernities alongside Infernity Break to make the archetype stand out and find TCG success without Trishula. Despite the strong performance in the TCG and OCG, Infernity wasn't as powerful at the 2010 World Championship, despite still having three Infernity Barrier at the time. Neither Trishula nor Barrier were legal for the event due to both being region locked between the OCG and TCG respectively. It still had a decent performance with the top eight list that made the top 25 players, but the exclusivity of some of the best cards they used in either region prevented them from showing off its true power on the biggest stage. However, this wasn't the last time the deck would get a chance to show its power at the World Championship. 
With the success of the Infinity archetype in both regions of the world, a hit on the ban list in some fashion was warranted. While the OCG was able to hit Trishula to 1, the main limitation that affected both regions immediately was launch going to 1, the first list after its release. This was a fair hit to the archetype since a spell with no hard ones per turn being able to revive two monsters on its own was pretty powerful. It was a significant hit to the archetype, but it didn't completely wipe Infinities off the face of the competitive landscape. Remember, back in this time in 2010, the OCG and TCG still had their ban list tied at the hip, so both were the same and could only hit cards that were able to be hit in both sections of the game between the TCG and the OCG. The archetype was still able to spam out synchros for a while as Hundred Eyes Dragon copying the effect of Infernity Mirage was a solid alternative to just having one launcher, though the pure synchro variant only had a few stops after launcher went to one. They'd get a second shot in the metagame with the Xyz mechanic though. They were able to use Xyz like Levy or the Sea Dragon to summon a banished Stygian Street Patrol to help summon Infernity Archfiend for more searching in the synchro variant, but eventually the archetype would steer away from synchros to focus purely on Xyz. With the Xyz mechanic debuting to the game in 2011, Infernity were eventually able to use it to find a second lease on life in the meta. Of course, it took a little bit as the archetype needed the Xyz pool to expand to have enough tools to use with just that mechanic alone. While it wasn't 2013 when this variant showed up, the dominance of Spellbooks and Dragon Rulers at the time made the version have to wait until 2014 to become one of the best decks. While this does mean the archetype didn't really get to use number 16 Shockmaster to full force by the time the deck became a major contender, again, they did have other exceeds they used to their fullest potential. Diamond Dire Wolf was used in Infernities to clear your board so you can summon more monsters. Number 66 Master Key Beetle was an exceeds that Infernities were able to use that many other decks couldn't to protect their back row like a set Infernity Barrier or a Vanity's Emptiness you intended to activate. Number 101 Silent Honor Arc and Evil Swarm Exiton Knight were good removal options whether it was a single special summon monster or an entire board respectively. Levier, as mentioned previously, was used to help keep bringing back Street Patrol to summon more Archfiends from the hand. The main exceeds in this strategy, though, was Lavable Chain, due to its ability to get Stygian Street Patrol in the graveyard, or maybe even an Infernity to revive off the launcher. The archetype didn't just rely on Infernities, though, as they used other enablers to help make rank 4 monsters. Summoner Monk was great since you ran a lot of spells, getting you to wait to get an Infernity Archfiend or Stygian Street Patrol from the deck while emptying the hand. Tin Goldfish and Goblinberg helped summon your level 4s from the hand to make an instant rank 4. Dinotherium was a free special summon from the hand, also you had instant fusion to get a level 3 or 4 fusion immediately out of the extra deck. Archfiend Eris was also ran to send to the graveyard to search your Infernity Archfiend. This variant of Infernity was extremely successful arguably equal to or more successful than the synchro version of the deck. It being basically at full power in both regions was a major benefit, even with Infernity Launcher going to 1. During this deck's lifetime, it was able to stand strong in the meta, and this was the variant that was able to help Infernity run it back at the World Championship and eventually led the archetype to earn a victory at the event in 2014. The success on this stage four years after the archetype's release was what eventually got Infernity Archfiend to 1 and put the deck out of the meta what was seemingly for good, especially with the rise of archetypes from Duelist Alliance like Shadal, Satellar Knights, and Burning Abyss, the latter only in the TCG. Now, we've reached the end of our Infernity adventure by seeing how they were able to yet again adapt to another mechanic, this time being the Link mechanic. Funny enough, this also uses the Pendulum mechanic that Infernity didn't use that much when it was brand new, but now we got the tools to be able to FTK the opponent. This was done using what was easily the most broken Link monster printed, pre errata Firewall Dragon. The FTK is a very complicated combo, but overall you summon enough monsters to tribute off for Amazonas Archer, which Firewall while Dragon helped get more monsters on the field to burn the opponent for enough damage for the FTK. Infernities were also great at spamming monsters with Infernity Necromancer not being a hard once per turn. Curios the Light Sworn Dominion helped in setting up your graveyard for said FTK, being able to send Blackwing Zephyrus the Elite to use certain effects again. You also had a very consistent way to get your Archer with MX Saber Invoker. It was a fairly consistent FTK as well and one of many to show how much of a mistake Firewall Dragon was. Infernity has had a storied history ever since its release in 2009 and initial rise to prominence in 2010, from spamming out synchros alongside using Trishula as many times as possible, or just setting up Infernity Barriers to stop the opponent, to later on using the Xyz mechanic to make some good toolbox Xyz monsters while getting a good line of back rows set up to, when we last saw them, FTKing with the new Link mechanic and Firewall Dragon. That is a lot of evolution.
The archetype hasn't really had a notable showing though since 2018. Even with Infernity Barrier being back at three and the archetype getting new support in Phantom Rage and Ghosts from the Past, the second haunting, the new support does have hard ones per turns on it, showing Konami has learned from the mistake of not initially putting them on the old Infernity cards. It is unknown whether Infernity will have another time in the spotlight, especially with Infernity Archfiend remaining at one in the TCG and Launcher also being limited in both regions to this very day. Still, the handless combo has proven to be one of the best in this game's history. And that brings us to a close on our story of Infernities. I hope that you enjoyed this bit of a different retrospective where we took a specific deck like Infernity that has just had so much evolution in its time and has just evolved and changed so much over the years. I thought it would be fun to talk about. So I hope that you did enjoy it. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to hit that ding dong notification bell so that we can continue to grow further beyond 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.